As the saying goes, whoever controls Snake Island controls the Black Sea. The safest way to get there? The Ukrainian military's inflatable speedboat. With seating for six, it's small enough to stay out of sight. We are really getting tossed around out here, but we need to take a small boat because we need to stay out of the sights of Russian reconnaissance aircraft. Safer than a helicopter, but no protection from the Black Sea's big waves, bitter cold and whipping winds, not to mention the mines. By the end of our stomach-turning journey, Snake Island's craggy cliffs are a welcome sight. Up close, a pier in pieces previews the destruction we're about to see. We enter Snake Island by climbing up a pile of half-sunken, slippery sea blocks. We're the first journalists allowed here since Ukraine recaptured Snake Island five months ago. Russia blanketed the island with booby traps before bailing out. The soldiers told us we need to follow in their footsteps exactly, and we need to be very careful where we step. This whole island is littered with landmines, unexploded ordnance, basically a powder keg. A powder keg with plenty of cats wandering through the wreckage of 10 brutal months of war. Not a snake in sight. On February 24th, the first day of Russia's full-scale invasion, Russia's Black Sea flagship, the Moskva, aimed its arsenal at Snake Island, demanding dozens of Ukrainian defenders surrender or die. What happened next is how legends are made. Five words, seen at the time as a final act of defiance. Everyone on Snake Island presumed dead. Russian bombs raining down, the island's radio went silent. Those five words telling the Russian warship where to go. Instantly iconic, inspiring t-shirts, postage stamps, pop songs. Ukraine later learned Snake Island's defenders were alive, prisoners of war. Some released in a POW swap earlier this year, others remain in Russian captivity. Is it intimidating to look out and see a giant Russian warship and know that you guys are a small group here? If anybody tells you it's not intimidating, he's a liar, says Fortuna, a volunteer soldier. It was chaos. The garrison here was small. Russia captured the island quickly. Taking the island back took a long time. On Snake Island, we find a graveyard of Russian weapons, the result of relentless Ukrainian attacks for several months earlier this year. This is one of Russia's most expensive anti-aircraft weapon systems. As you can see, not much use anymore. In April, Ukraine says its missiles sank the Moskva. Where did it go? The bottom of the Black Sea. A humiliated Kremlin says their flagship caught fire, sinking in stormy weather. In May, a Ukrainian drone strike on Snake Island turned this helicopter into a fireball. This is what's left of that Russian helicopter pulverized along with its crew of about eight people. A twisted relic of Russia's ill-fated plan to transform this remote Black Sea outpost into a permanent aircraft carrier. What's it like to live out here? We need to be on guard 24-7, Fortuna says, so we never get bored. We notice his Russian accent. Turns out Fortuna was born in Russia. He moved to Ukraine and got married before the war. Now part of a Russian volunteer corps protecting Snake Island for Ukraine. How do you feel about Russia now? For us, they're enemies, no matter what. Most of the Russian Volunteer Corps lived in Ukraine before the invasion, he says. We were living life, had families, good jobs, and here comes Russia attacking us. If some other country attacked us, we would fight too. Life on Snake Island means almost total isolation. Soldiers tell me the simple act of switching on a cell phone brings Russian rockets within 40 minutes. They say Russia attacked the island just last month. We are now out of time. We've been on the island just about an hour, and it's important that we get off before the waves get too big and before the Russians know we're here. The Ukrainians say Russia blew up Snake Island's historic lighthouse and museum on the site of an ancient Greek temple. Evil spirits are rumored to roam these 46 acres of rock and sand, bearing witness to centuries of bloodshed. Ukraine is not the first nation to control Snake Island, but vows 
it will be the last. Will Ripley, CNN, on Snake Island.